Now, the types of frauds that you can be exposed to, you really got to sit back because not one size fit all. You really have to look at different factors within the business. And there's different ways to look at fraud. First of all, what party is, you, you can look at it from the party perspective. Management, employees, clients, bookkeeper, accountant. Well, let's just look at one of them. Let's say for, you've got an external accountant. You think, what fraud can an external accountant do to you? Well, w one example, of course, is that you fill out your little checks to make your installment payments. And one good practice is you always write on the back of your check your SIN number or your, or your business number for CRA. But then, accidentally or whatever, the accountant puts his own number in, and there was a recent situation of this. Uh, that was, and puts his own number in, so you don't get credit for it, but goes to his account. We can think of other ones to do with management and employees. And then industry. Every industry could be, is different. Some industries have industry type uh, uh, frauds which are more prevalent to them. For example, like a restaurant, hospitality business. Their fraud will be totally different types of fraud that, that, that you're really concerned about will be different than one in respect to a law office or an accounting firm. So you've got to look at the industry as well as the nature of the person. And the transaction itself. Transactions are, di are different. Some transactions are more prone to fraud. And the company, and by the company I mean just not the nature of the business but also is the environment, the working environment. Some, as, you, as I noted at the beginning, some environments are more conducive to frauds than other ones, and also the type of controls that they have in place. And, and the structures you've got to look at the business. For example, if you were an uh, absentee owner of the business, you have hired a manager now that you want to relax more, <coughs> the you will have different type of controls because you've got different exposures than if you have your hand on the pulse and you're there every day. Because that's one benefit that a business owner may have. He's got his hand on the pulse. But if suddenly you want to sit back and enjoy life, you've now paid off your mortgage, you've found the, the right person, you're going to need different information and different controls because you're now exposed to different risks than before you are there because you don't know what's going on as much as you do. What could a manager do? Again, I'm not accusing anybody at all, we're just giving examples. If you're, is the, uh, the, uh, the manager now has taken over your functions, before you may have weak controls upon the, upon the cash because you handled all the cash, then they may have more opportunity uh, in, in respect to their. Now, other ways to look at types of fraud, and I'm using again the, the Association of Certified Examiners classification system, they have three categories, corruption, asset misappropriation, and fraudulent statements. Now, as a small business, fraud, fraudulent statements probably you, know, you have less risk exposure uh, than asset misappropriation. Now, having said that, as we noted before, if you uh, absentee owner, you may be more exposed in respect to the fraud, fraudulent statements. Corruption, conflict of interest. Well, you say, well, small business, how could you be exposed to conflict of interest? Well, one way is that if you have a purchasing uh, party, a buyer for you, because you now have like 60, 70 employees, or you're the, well, your expertise is the accountant, you found the, you found the right buyer, is that they go and they start to contract with their brother-in-law. And they happen to have, and, he, and, the, and the buyer happens to have 30% 30, 30 of the company. So there's a conflict there. It may be fine, but it may not be because of the fact is you could potentially be in charge more uh, for, 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 for your goods. So you could be exposed to conflict of interest. Asset misappropriation, we'll, go, we'll deal with that separately. And but it's divided between cash and non cash. And as we can see with the cash, again, we've got different uh, categories there. Fraud, fraud, fraudulent disbursements, 
skimming, which is before is recorded. And I'll give you a nice little example upon that. Because skimming, having been brought up in the retail business, I always, you know, skimming was basically take the money before it gets in the tail, then no one would know about it until they took inventory at year end. But of course now we've got the computer and we're becoming more online, et cetera, and becoming more sophisticated. Well, one, one uh, type of skimming I saw last year was that, I don't know if you ever seen those Google ads? You know, like you click on the ad and, and the company would then get some money because AdSense and, and the way how it works is that when you click on it, money is then allocated to this company and is, and is directed straight to a bank account. Well, in this particular case, it was kind of neat because the uh, company, when they reviewed it, after they had all these AdSense linked up about seven years uh, uh, later, is that of about the 50 type of transactions that they had, 10 of them was in the company's account. This was someone else's account. So, so somehow, whether it was done by, um, had gotten in online, some, someone had basically set themselves a nice little annuity that basically 10 out of the 50 uh, revenue streams were not going to the company like it should be, it was going to this other party. So nice skimming right off the top, wasn't discovered for, for, for a few years it was, uh, as to how it occurred. Uh, then of course larceny, larceny is after it's recorded. It's rung up in the tail, take the money before you deposit it into the bank account. If someone doesn't reconcile the till tape to the deposits, it probably will go undetected. And then you can see we're leaning towards controls. And again, with cash, we're taking a very broad perspective to cash. Non-cash, basically theft. Your inventory, your computers, your cars. And within this category, there's misuse, where employees take the truck home, use it on the weekend for their own revenue purposes, or if you're in a carpet cleaning business, they go out and work on the side. I don't know if you ever had that scenario where someone says, well, have you, uh, someone, oh, I work for the company, but, you, but sir, it would cost you $200, but I can come on the Saturday on my own, and you pay me on the side, is 100 bucks. Right, so that type of scenario, where he's using the company assets for his own benefits. So, in fraudulent disbursements, which is really, I think, the area which small businesses are exposed to, is in respect to billing payment schemes. That's one category. Uh, personal expenses, You're paying your telephone bill, paying your electric light bill of the company. Uh, I'll throw in mine, I'll throw in my mother's and a few more. The boss never sees it. What's that extra hundred dollars to him? Credit card. Many times uh, the owner's sitting there. He's busy doing his drawings or whatever, and suddenly, oh, oh, sir, we need some more more supply. Oh, no problem here. Um, oh, I'll take my credit card. That's my code number. So they go to the store and buy a few extra items. Oh, I might as well buy it now. He won't mind. And off you go. And one area which I really feel that companies aren't, aren't paying attention to is online. Because how many owners really want to sit down, make their payments online, and they have absolutely no controls, or they really don't go back and look at them, say, so, oh, here, just hook us up online, pay, pay all the bills online, I trust you, and off they go. So suddenly you're exposed. I'm not saying it always occurs, but my concern is just the exposure to risk. And so by giving, by the online payments, suddenly you, there is a lot less controls than there used to be because people aren't paying attention to the, to the online payments. Payroll schemes, you say, well, how can that occur in a small business? Well, I've seen it in a small business, is, well, the, uh, the payroll clerk or the accountant decides to add his niece. No problem at all. As the niece, as somebody else, the money goes directly in because the owner just looks at the bottom, oh, payroll today, this week is $10,000. Oh, that's about right. Doesn't notice the $300 difference. He doesn't look down the scan, the, uh, the list. He doesn't get it from the bank afterwards to see who was paid and by how much. Expense reimbursements. 
This is one of the major areas actually for companies which have um, expense re reimbursements and sometimes it's purely because they don't have strong policies in respect to what, wh what is right and what, um, and what is not right as to you know, what level of hotels or what sometimes happens, you go for dinner with your cousin from out of town, he suddenly pops up, he orders all the best wine and everything else and great dinner and you were thinking it was going to be shared and he says, oh John, thank you. What a lovely evening. It's been so long since I see you. Um, here's the bill. Pay it for four or five hundred dollars. And you say, well, 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 what? And he runs off. Next night, you take your a client out, purely business, go to the same place or whatever. It's only a hundred bucks. There you are at the end of the month. You're figuring out how to pay for it. Oh, well, I'll just switch them around. I'll put the 400 personal in instead of the business one. And, and that way, it's covered. But, of course, we can see what's wrong with that paying a personal expense <coughs> or one week you put in your credit you put in your credit card slip get reimbursed next week you put in the receipt and get reimbursed so double reimbursements check tampering we don't do that much checks as we used to in Canada anymore that's why I was more concerned with the online things but it still occurs I had a friend call me last year they got a call from the bank no, no, they got a call from their uh, creditor you haven't paid your bill from last month. When are you going to pay it? I paid it. Me didn't pay it. I paid it. I know I paid it. So went back through, through, through the bank statement. Sure enough, check cleared. Call up the bank. Bank sends, can we please have a copy? Suddenly look at the check. Name was whited out. Someone's, other person's name was in there. $400. Creditors still want to be paid. Try, uh, looked at the ID, bank traced it and everything, couldn't find the person, they used a fake ID. Out of pocket. Register disbursements. Uh, that's where you're trying to cover your, tr uh, your trail. You've taken the money from the tail, taken $200, you press void. That's why you gotta have controls on such thing. Again, it's more retail service business. We should note you have different types of fraud in, in, um, in service business. Same thing with the false refunds. You give someone a refund, it's all legit, everyone signs off, says, gee, that was pretty simple. I need an extra hundred dollars to go out this weekend. <laughs> it's still the same thing, just sign it off and no one knows the difference. Having said that, there are controls that can catch it later. 